Hey, what's up, musers? John here. I know it's been forever since I've made a video. Um, a lot has changed since uh, Adobe Muse canceled the their development or ended their development. Um, I think I've made a video on this before, but I did switch to Webflow. Um, so I have my Webflow project here, webdevforyou.com. Uh, a lot of my resources are free now for Webflow. You can get free templates and interactions uh, from here. I'll leave a link in the description area below to my Webflow profile. Uh, but if you're not familiar with Webflow, Webflow is kind of the um, the visual web development platform that would have taken me to my account there, but I'll leave a link to webflow.com. And initially my goal was to teach Adobe Muse users how to use Webflow, uh, but Webflow just has so much great content in the Webflow University that I didn't really feel the need to have to create a lot of video tutorials because you know Webflow goes over a lot of it here. Um, so so yeah, I didn't I didn't quite go into the tutorial space. I just decided to make a lot of free re resources. I have a lot of animations that you can clone and you know into your project. And I do have a lot of uh, video tutorials at um, my web dev for you channel uh, that you can check out as well. So with that said, um, and I know a lot of you or a few of you are still subscribed and you know, there's still, you can still download the resources. Uh, but I have since, since Adobe can't uh, stop development, I have stopped really working on the widgets or developing the widgets and templates. Uh, but I did, I do still have them available because Adobe Muse can still be downloaded. Uh, it doesn't really work on an M1 Mac. So I'm on an M1. So I can't really open it here on, in this tutorial. But, um, you know, I know I probably should have made a few videos earlier, but now I'm coming back full, full circle uh, with Webflow and I'm transitioning this YouTube channel to completely talk about Webflow. Uh, so what I've decided to do rather than creating like tutorials on how to use Webflow, um, I've decided to just show you how to recreate some of the Adobe Muse templates in Webflow. So I'll be creating um, short little videos every you know, every couple of days. So you can see me build, uh, take this Adobe Muse template and build it in Webflow. Um, that way you get some practice with Webflow and you get to see how it works and you get to see how I can take a, a Muse template and yeah, build it in Webflow. So yeah, um, that's basically the, the introduction there. Um, so this first video, we're gonna start building this Euphoria gym template and then this template will be for free to clone into Webflow. Uh, if you don't have Webflow, you can sign up for free. Again, the link is in the description area below. Uh, so hopefully we can start the communication going again. You can start asking me questions about websites. Um, I was just pretty bummed. I know it happened a few, quite a few years ago now, but after that, I, I just really looked for an alternative where I could pivot my muse for You business to Webflow, and it wasn't quite the same model. So since then, I've just been working or making a lot of Webflow videos for free. And I did work for Webflow for a couple years, uh, so I was busy doing that. Uh, but yeah, I just want to get it back into my Muse for You channel. I know a lot of you have subscribed, and so I want to uh, continue to provide some good website content on this YouTube channel. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start a blank project in Webflow, and we'll start building out uh, the nav here for this template. All right, so we have uh, this header here for the template. Uh, yeah, let's start with the nav bar here where we have the logo and we have these uh, nav links here. So if you're new to Webflow if you, and you've never seen this, again, I recommend going to the Webflow University um, and I'll leave a link in the description area below. And if you want to get started with Webflow, I'd recommend um, their, uh, their 101 course, their Webflow 101. Uh, let's see, it should be... Yeah, the Webflow 101 Crash Course. It's their first, kind of their first one here. And that'll get you started with how to use Webflow. But hopefully from watching me, you can get kind of an idea of how to use it as I build here in, in Webflow. Uh, so yeah, this is Webflow. We have the the blank, uh, blank canvas. Uh, here to the left, we have the different elements. Uh, we have components, which are kind of like symbols, or they've changed it to components. We have the navigator the different pages here. We have a CMS, um, Webflow now has memberships and e-commerce, and we have the assets here. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I have the assets from the gym template. They're all right here. So I'm just going to click, hold and drag these assets in here so I can quickly access them. Um, I should have the logo as well. And let me just grab the logo, uh, logo SVG. There it is. Okay. And great. So I have the logo and cool. So let's go ahead and start with the nav. So uh, with Webflow, we're working with classes. So Webflow to me is has the most direct correlation to class names um, or to actual web development, which makes it so powerful. And Webflow, honestly, was what I was hoping Adobe Muse would become uh, back when Muse was still being developed like four or five years ago. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with the project. The first thing I like to do is add a div. So I use uh, the quick find in Webflow, which is Command K, and it brings up the quick find and I can add elements. So in Webflow, it's very related to web, web development in the sense that we're working with div blocks. So here I'll add a div and I'll call this, um, I'm gonna call this the page wrapper. And so this is the class name I'm giving to this div block. And so we're, it, it's using the, uh, the box model. And again, if this sounds like a foreign language, I highly recommend the 101 course. Um, but yeah, I'll start with a page wrapper. I like to wrap all my elements in the div block called page wrapper. Then I'll add another div and I'm gonna call this the navigation. Uh, actually, before I do that, in this wrapper, I'm going to add a section and I'm going to call this navigation section. And then I'm going to add a div and I'm going to call this navigation container. And actually, let me just call it container. So this is going to be the container for all of our elements. It's going to have a max width of, let's do 1170. And then we'll set the margin to auto so it's in the center. And there we go. So we have our container, we have the navigation section, and in the container, we're gonna go ahead and add the, um, let me just zoom out here just to make sure. And you know what, this container is actually gonna be different here for this navigation. I'm going to, let me remove this class name, and I'm just gonna go call it uh, nav container. And yeah, we'll make it the full width. And I'll short this here, shorten this to say nav section. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and add a link block. And we'll call this nav brand link block. And in here, I'll add an image. And I'll choose the logo. And where did that logo go? Image. To do replace image okay so the image is there we just have to set a specific width and height to the link block so let's say 100 pixels in width and maybe 200 there we go and we'll call this uh, brand image okay so the reason we can't see it is because uh, this so let me see here yeah, so we have, actually the nav is in this uh, top section. So let me go into Webflow and in the page wrapper, we'll call this hero, we'll add a section and we'll call this hero section. Okay, place this up here and the nav container will go in the hero section and we'll delete this nav section. All right, cool. So we have the nav container and yeah, it looks good. And for the hero section, I'm gonna add some padding of 10 VW and 10 VW. I like working in viewport units and that looks good. So for the hero section, let's go ahead and add the image. So we'll add an image and let's make it the height 500 pixels and we'll add a background image. So we'll go to the background, we'll choose an image and let's go ahead and add this one, set it to cover and center. And I'm also going to add um, to the hero section. Let's see how I want to do this. Yeah, I'm going to add a div. 
and I'm gonna say position, I'm gonna add, uh, call this um, hero overlay, set the position to absolute and full. So it fills the hero section, I'll set the hero section to relative. And for the hero overlay, we're going to set the background to black and the opacity to like 30. Okay, and let's bring the nav container. Uh, let's set the Z index to, let's set the position to relative. There we go, okay, cool. Now the image is in the background and let's make the hero section actually like maybe 700 pixels or 600. Okay, so that's looking okay. And cool, then we have the navigation here on the right. So for this nav container, I'm going to set the disp display setting to flex, horizontal, and justify left and right. Then I'll add a div, and I'll call this nav item wrapper. And in here, we'll add a link block, and we'll call this nav item link block. And in here, we'll set the flex, the setting to flex, horizontal, center, center. And I'll add a text block in here, text block. And we'll say for the link block, I can select the parent element down here. And we're gonna remove the underline and set the text to white. Okay, and this text is, it looks like, what text is this? Uh, Poppins. Okay, so let's go ahead and install Poppins because we don't have it in the project. So in Webflow, I'll go to project settings and I'll go to fonts and I have access to all the Google fonts. I'll type in P and I'll select Poppins uh, right here. Okay, I'll go ahead and add all the versions of it. Add font. Here we go, so now we have Poppins. And we'll start with the first one is about. So we'll say about, and we'll call this uh, nav item text. And let's set the text to Poppins. We'll say all capital, some more type options, all capital. We'll add some letter spacing, and that looks good. So I'll just copy this nav item link block few times and for the nav item wrapper let's set it to flex horizontal align center and justify left so we have about trainers workouts membership and contact about trainers workouts membership and contact all right so let's add some margin to the right maybe 20 pixels and we're gonna remove the uh, <clears throat> the letter spacing. Yeah, that looks good. It's more in line with this. And then to this uh, nav container, let's add some padding to the top and bottom, maybe 40 pixels. And yeah, it's looking good. All right, so let's go back in here and then we have the social media links. Let me see if I, if I can add them here. Um, Those links are actually font awesome links, I believe. Yeah, they are. So we're gonna have to um, install font awesome to get them. So we'll, we'll do that a little bit later, but actually I can do that now. I'll add another div and we'll call this social, um, social link wrapper. And for now we'll add yeah, we'll add a link block and we'll call this social link block and we'll just uh, set the width and height to like 30 by 30 and for now we'll set the background to white and we'll set the uh, the border radius to 50 percent and we'll just make it you know copy and paste three times uh, these are will just be placeholders for the social media icons and yeah so let me see here, we'll justify left and 
Um, so nav container, let me do this div. Uh, we'll say nav left. And we'll put the nav brand link block in nav left. And we'll add another div. We'll say nav right. And we'll put the nav item wrapper and the social media links on the right. And now we'll just have to do, uh, yeah, justify left and right. And then for the nav right, we'll say flex and perfect and align center. Cool. So for the nav item wrapper, let me add some margin or let me add some padding to this as well. Maybe 10 and some margin to the right. Something like 40 and great. So this is a little bit big. Let me change this to 20 by 20. All right, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let me set this to horizontal align. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. We got the nav going um, and yeah, so we can start to get it to look more like this. The text is a little bit big, so let's do 12. Yeah, that looks a little better and cool. Maybe now oh, we can we can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe thirteen. Yeah, that's better. Okay, um, so we're done with the nav here. I'll add the social the social links in a second, and we'll add uh, this center piece as well with the light box um, in the next video. So hopefully you were able to follow along with that. Um, I'll try to do you know. A video a short video every day so you can start getting a feel for how I approach uh, building in Webflow and we also have this nice uh, drop down that comes in when we scroll down so yeah that's the other thing I'll start to show how to use interactions that's what's great about Webflow um, it has interactions built in so you can add animations to Webflow as you're building so if you're interested in building with Webflow um, definitely follow along this tutorial Again, I know it's been delayed, but this channel is gonna be switching to Webflow content. Hopefully you like it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions about previous Muse things and anything with Webflow and any of the content that I'm providing moving forward. Uh, so again, uh, a link to Webflow is in the description area below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.